Hi friends, welcome to today's session. Thank you all for your yesterday's responses. And the rest today's quiz question was one health approach in India helped discover the source of which disease in 1950s and the answer is Kaisenur forest disease and now let's start today's session first question for the day with regard to appropriation bill consider the following statements statement one it is a money bill that allows the government to withdraw funds from the consolidated fund of India and statement two the appropriation bill shall be passed by a ballot vote which of the above statements is are correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two correct answer here is it is option a one only so guys it is a money bill that allows government to withdraw funds from consolidated fund of india to meet its expenses during a financial year as per the article 114 of the constitution the government can withdraw money from the consolidated fund only after receiving approval from the parliament to put it simply the finance bill contains provisions on financing the expenditure of the government and appropriation bill specifies the quantum and purpose for withdrawing money the procedures are government introduces appropriation bill in lower house of parliament that is lok sabha and after discussions on budget proposals and voting on demands for grants the appropriation bill is firstly passed by lok sabha and thereafter sent to rajya sabha and the rajya sabha has authority to recommend any amendments in this bill but it is the privilege of the lok sabha to either accept or reject the recommendations made by the rajya sabha and the exclusive feature of the appropriation bill is its automatic repeal clause whereby the act gets repealed by itself after it meets its statutory purpose and the bill can be passed by voice vote also and if the bill is defeated in a parliamentary vote that would lead to the resignation of the government or a general election this has never happened in india till date so that is about appropriation bill now we'll move to second question second question is with reference to bharat stage emission standards consider the following statements statement 1 they are set by the central pollution control board statement 2 it was first brought into effect in 2000 under the head india 2000 and statement 3 the government implemented bs5 in 2016 and planning to introduce bharat stage 6 that is bs6 in 2020 which of the above statements is are correct option a 2 and 3 only option b 1 and 3 only option c 1 only and option d 1 and 2 only correct answer here is it is option d 1 and 2 only the bharat stage emission standards are instituted by government of india to regulate the output of air pollutants mainly from motor vehicles and the standards and the timeline for implementation are set by central pollution control board under ministry of environment forest and climate change and the, these standards are based on the lines of european norms commonly known as euro 2 euro 3 and so on and the fourth iteration bs4 was introduced in 2017 and the delay between bs3 and bs4 resulted in fast tracking the bs6 norms instead of bs5 that means they suspended bs5 norms and introducing bs6 norms instead and each of this emission norms has stricter emission standards compared to its predecessors and if you see the upcoming norms bs6 real driving emission which will measure a vehicle's emission in real time conditions against laboratory conditions will be introduced in india for the first time with the implementation of bs6 and in bs6 on board diagnostics has been made mandatory for all vehicles and the sulfur traces of bs6 fuel is five times lower as compared to sulfur traces in bs4 and the emission of nitrogen oxides of from diesel cars is also expected to reduce by nearly 70% and 25% from cars with petrol engines so that are the specialties of bs6 now we'll move to last question for the day with reference to uranium consider the following statement statement 1 the biological half life of uranium is about 15 days and statement 2 it is a naturally occurring element found in low levels within all rock soil and water and third statement naturally it is very rare to find in earth 
and which of the above statements is are correct option a one and two only option b two and three only option c three only and option d one two and three so the correct answer here is it is option a one and two only guys here there are a few things to note first is that uranium is weakly radioactive and remains so because of its long physical half-life and physical half-life is about 4 billion years for uranium-238 and the biological half-life that means the average time it takes for the human body to eliminate half the amount in the body and the biological half-life for uranium is about 15 days it is a naturally occurring element found in low levels within all rock, soil and water and this is the highest numbered element to be found naturally in significant quantities on earth that's why statement 3 is wrong uh, it is considered to be plentiful than antimony beryllium cadmium gold etc uh, it is about as abundant as tin and arsenic now our issue is water contamination because of uranium the mechanism by which uranium enters groundwater is still under research there are two types of terrain in india which have been identified with heavy contamination of uranium and they are first one is alluvial aquifers in Rajasthan and other northwestern regions and second one is crystalline rocks such as granite in southern regions like Telangana and some researchers have said that the over extraction of groundwater exposes uranium to air which triggers its release from the rocks further research is needed in this regard as it would help in identifying regions where safer water can be found and notably even information on how uranium accumulated within the rocks during sedimentation would help in estimating the regions of prevalence and guys our today's quiz question is another weak radioactive element is thorium and it is predominantly found in coastal regions of india and the question is the largest concentration of thorium is found in monocyte sand of which coast so please post your answers in the comment section and that's all for today guys we'll meet tomorrow with another set of questions please post your scores also in the comment section thank you for watching